When God changes you, when Jesus touches your life, there comes a supernatural change over your life. He changes us from the inside out. And people will have no choice but to see that Jesus has had an impact on your life. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome to another midweek service right here at Kingdom Rock Family Worship Center. I am so excited that you decided once again to uh, listen by way of podcast or radio and also to view by way of YouTube, Roku, uh, Vimeo. There are a whole lot of platforms. However you're listening or watching, we thank you so much for tuning in. Well, as you know, We've been in a series entitled The Miracle Man. This is part number 10. I love it. We've been here for a couple of months now, and we're still going strong. Last time we stopped and we subtitled the, the message, subtitled it, Out of Weakness. And this is going to be part number two of that. So it's part two of uh, Out of Weakness, part 10 of the series. You know, you got to love it, right? So thank you so much for joining me. Now, don't forget, if you have not heard parts, uh, the parts before this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine, then you can go to our website at kingdomrock.org. There you can find uh, this message and the entire series. So check it out today. All right, I'm ready to get back into this. All right, let's do it. I'm so very excited. All right, we were in again on, we were in, um, John, the ninth chapter, and we stop at verse number four. We're talking about the man that was born blind and how it's God's plan to use this man's weakness to bring attention and honor to the name of Jesus so that people may believe in him. And then when people believe in him, they will glorify God. This brings glory to God, right? So out of his weakness, God's going to use it greatly to advance his kingdom. Now, again, as we said last week, I don't believe the father caused this man to be born blind, but he is using this weakness and he's about to heal him uh, to advance the kingdom of God, to bring him great glory, that people, may, that people will be saved, delivered, and set free. So again, from last week, we said that you may have been born with some disability as well. It may not have been a physical disability. Maybe it's emotional, maybe it's mental, or maybe it's the family that you have inherited once you were born, I don't know, but out of weakness, or maybe it's poverty. Out of that weakness, God can get the glory if we allow him to use us. And we saw here in verse number four, let's go back to verse four. Again, this is um, John 9th chapter, verse four. Jesus said something here, we're gonna continue here. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can do work, which means that you and I also have a set time to do the works of God. Jesus had work to do, and you and I also have works to do. Our work will glorify and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus. People will be saved, delivered, and set free, and they will come to know him as Lord and Savior, and they will bring glory and honor to the Father because it's the Father's heart for them to be saved. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. So I wanted you to notice too that there is another scripture that we also find here in the book of John where the Lord uses another situation to bring glory uh, to Christ, to reveal who Christ is and bring glory on to the Father. Well, it's happened there when Lazarus died. Let's look at this. We're going to look at just one verse here. You can read the entire chapter when you get home or maybe you're home now, but you got me. Let's go to John, the 11th chapter, verse number four. It says this, when Jesus heard that, when Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the son might be glorified thereby. Talking about Lazarus. No, no, this is not the, yes, Lazarus is dead, but this is not the final thing for him. God's going to get the glory out of this. The Father allowed this to happen so that Jesus will be magnified. People will see him as Christ. 
So again, he can use your weakness. Let me tell you something out of your weakness, whether it's a stammer, I had a very bad stammering and stuttering problem when I was younger, even back to elementary school, through high school, into college, to adult life. I'm, it's a long testimony, I can tell you about it. But out of that weakness, when I think about the times when I stood in front of a class to teach or stood in front of, the, in front of a class to do some sort of oral presentation or to read in front of a group of people, how I would stutter and stammer, and if you had told me that, hey, your God's going to use you to speak in front of a worldwide audience and to pastor a church, I would have laughed at you, thought you were crazy. You know, but here I am speaking to a worldwide audience, declaring the word of Christ. So God can use your weakness. Out of that weakness, his strength would come and it's going to glorify him. Amen. That's wonderful because he'll do it in such a way when people look back at you, they'll say, were you, did you used to do that? It's wonderful. When the work of God is done in your life, it becomes like a night and day thing and they can clearly see the hand of God in your life as he uses you. So don't, don't run from the weakness, uh, run to the father and present it before him and ask him to use it. Amen. All right, let's go on to verse number five here. Uh, here again in John 9, verse 5. We are really rolling now. We're on our way to get to verse 41. Woo! All right, let's go. It says, Jesus says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. Now, remember when Jesus left, he said that you and I are the salt of the earth, or he says it in, also in the Gospels here, you are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Why? Because his light is shining through us. So you are a light in your world. Did you get, grab that? You are a light in your world because there are others around you that need hope. They need healing. They need deliverance. They may need a smile. They may need a kind word. Whether your world is in the grocery store or in the office or in the church or in your neighborhood, you are the light there. Let the Lord shine through you and men will see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. They'll come to know Jesus because of you. You know, if we have that attitude every day that, that God is shining his light through me and I am to be an ambassador for Christ, that people will be looking at me and seeing Christ through me. If we have that mindset, that attitude every day, I bet you we would be a little bit less sour to people sometime, maybe a little bit more patient with them. You know, people make mistakes and errors, but it's our goal to show them Christ. Amen. I know it's difficult. I know some people can get on your last nerve, but see here again, you hold the weight and the responsibility. You are the light in your world. Let him use you. So pray on that regard. Okay. Pray on that regard. You know, um, what Jesus is, we are to reflect. As Jesus is kind, let his light of kindness shine through you. As Jesus is love, let his love shine through you. And joyful, let his love and joy and peace, let it just shine through you, okay? Got me? All right, I know it's a challenge. It is a challenge. Of course it is. But I know you can do that through him. So let's read on. All right, let's look at verse number six. It says, when he had thus spoken, when Jesus had said all of this, when he had just spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Verse 7. And he said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Now, let's take a moment with that. Now, remember on last time, we said that God's going to use this man's blindness or this man's weakness to turn attention to Jesus as Christ, as miracle worker, as God in the flesh. And this would cause people to have faith in Christ and be saved. And then this would bring glory and honor to the father. God's going to use this man's weakness. Now, all of this started 
remember verse 1 of um, John 9, it says Jesus was passing by and saw them. And we saw it in John number 8, how Jesus just came out of some horrible stuff. The Pharisees and, uh, and that religious bunch were really after him, and they were going to kill him. They were going to uh, throw stones at him, kill him, kill him to death. That doesn't make any sense. They were going to stone him to death because he said that he was greater than Abraham, that he is, in essence, the Christ. So they didn't believe that. And so they were going to do away with him. But he hid himself and, and passed on by. This is when we come to this man that is blind. Now, it is very interesting that when Jesus heals this man, he spits on the ground, makes some clay, and anoints this man's eyes. In other words, he smeared the clay on his eyes and then tells him to go wash at the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So this man goes to scent, right? This man goes to scent and then he comes back. He says, and he came again seeing, or he says, and washed and came seeing. In other words, he came back to where Jesus was at that moment, okay? So he left there, dirty eyes, you know, anointed with the clay. Somebody I'm sure has to lead him to this pool. I'm not sure where it is, but he, he led them to the pool. And when he was at the pool, washed, he began to see, and now he is sent. Now he's sent back to that place where, uh, where he received his healing. Now Jesus has gone from that place. We're gonna see this. But now he's the sent man. Now. Why is he sent? Now, this is so glorious. Grab a hold of this. Why is he sent? Because remember, in this environment, there are people that say that Jesus is not Christ. The Pharisees, and we're going to see this, have already told the people, if you declare that Jesus is Christ, that he is the Son of God, we're going to cast you out of this church. We're going to cast you out of this synagogue. There's all this darkness all around us, and Jesus has all these haters but God is sending this man, which was once blind. Now he's coming back in with his sight. Now he is carrying a miracle. He's carrying the works of God. People can clearly see that there's something different about him. Glory to God. He has been sent. And if you would allow the father, he will send you to He'll clean you up. Hallelujah. He will clean you up. He will dress you up. He will send you forth as a new man or as a new woman, new girl, new boy. He'll send you forth as a new person carrying the works of God. And they will have no choice but to see and know that Christ has been present in your life. Let's look on to this. This is so powerful. So this man is being sent, right? Let's look on. All right, look at verse number eight. And it says, the neighbors. Oh my goodness, those nosy neighbors. <laughs> oh boy, let's, okay. Verse eight says, the neighbors therefore, and they which before had seen him, that he was blind, said, is not this he that sat and begged? Verse nine, some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. He looks like him. But he said, I am he. Look how the Lord completely changes this man. Hallelujah. They said, is this him? Is this him, the one that begged on the side of the road? Is this him? Now he's up and he's fully productive. Is this him? They'll say, is that her? The woman that she used to do a lot of crazy things on Friday night. She even did some questionable stuff. But now look at her. Wow. What has happened? Is that you? Used to be a, a swindler, used to be uh, someone unkind and uncaring and hateful. But now look, look what God did in your life. Awesome. There must be Jesus. It says the neighbors saw him and others that passed by. In other words, these were people that have probably known him from birth or as long as they've known him, he's been blind. They know he has not been faking it. He has been a set way for a set amount of time. And now they look at him and they can see a change. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. What about the change? What about the change? 
When God changes you, when Jesus touches your life, there comes a supernatural change of your life. He changes us from the inside out. And people will have no choice but to see that Jesus has had an impact on your life. And then you can tell them, Jesus did this to me. And they can either love him or hate him. They can either believe him or disbelieve him. Let's go back to this. This is so wonderful. You're excited about it. I'm excited about it. Let's go back. And so let's look at verse 9 again. It says, some said, he is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. I am he. Look at verse 10. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes open? How did this happen to you? Now, this should have been a point right here where there should have been a, a down home uh, shouting time. Hallelujah. Jesus healed this man that was born blind. The whole community should have been just rolling over, jumping up and shouting and praising the Lord because they saw this man. If nothing else, uh, be, there was an economic drain on the community because he was, you know, asking for asking for money all the time, but now he can be productive. Glory to God. So there should have been some shouting either way that God has done a miracle. This man has, has his sight. Oh, they should have been rejoicing. But instead, his miracle, the works of God, are now being confronted with criticism, now being confronted with haters. Ooh, everybody's not going to be happy that you've come out and that you're doing better. Everybody's not going to be happy that you've come out of the projects and, and now you own your own business. Everybody's not going to be happy with it. But don't worry, God can use you greatly. So he's the one that is sent. Remember, Jesus said, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is being interpreted, Siloam as interpreted, sent. So he's a sent one now, going back with the glory of God, going back with the miracle, the work of God that can be clearly seen and I think it should have been going back. Hey, guys, look at me. I can see. But instead, he's met with opposition, the same opposition that Jesus encountered there in John 8. Let's look on. This is thrilling. Whew. This is thrilling. Get your popcorn. Get ready. <laughs> Here it comes. All right. Verse number 10 says, therefore, they said, rather, therefore, said they unto him, how are thine eyes opened? He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay. Now, let me stop here for a second. He has never seen Jesus before. He's only heard his voice. He's never seen Jesus. Remember when Jesus saw him, he was blind. He made spittle of clay, anointed his eyes, and he went away and washed. Now he's coming back. He's never seen Jesus before. He's only heard his voice. And he knows that Jesus is the one that changed his life. Oh, isn't that our testimony? May never, we may have never seen the Lord, but we've heard his voice through his word. Mm. We've heard his voice and we have believed in him. And he that we have never seen has changed our lives. Oh, we're so forever thankful. And when it's changed your life, guess what? You're ready to defend him too. And that's what this man is about to do. Let's, mm, mm, mm. come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's get back here. This is so, whew. all right, let's go back. Uh, what verse? Verse 11. He answered and said, a man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received sight. Then said they unto him, where is he? Oh my goodness, can you hear that? Where is he? He said, I know not. Jesus had left the place. All right, now verse 13. They brought to, they brought to the uh, Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. My God. They take him to the haters of Jesus. Now again, it would seem as though this should be a happy time, a joyful time. God has just worked in this man's life but now he's going, now they're taking, first they accused him there. How did this happen to you? Oh my Jesus, the whole opposite of glorifying God is happening here. 
The opposite of joy is happening here. This man is being confronted. Not only is he being confronted by uh, others, but now they take him to the Pharisees, the very ones that were just a few moments ago picking up stones and were going to stone Jesus, saying, you're not greater than Abraham. You're not the Christ. We don't believe in you. But now God is sending this man Oh, my God, sending him with the works of God, sending him with the power of God, the evidence that says Jesus is Christ. My God, it's like the Lord is saying to those Pharisees, look, you need more evidence. All right. Well, let me get somebody. Hmm, here's somebody that was born blind, that nobody has done this before. That's impossible for him to be healed. Right. I'm going to get him and I'm going to bring him to you for you to believe but they still don't. Let's look on. Our time is almost gone. It says, they brought, they brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. All right, look at verse 14. And it was on, rather, and it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Ooh, mm. we'll talk about that. Verse 15. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how, how he had received his sight. He said unto them, he put clay upon mine eyes and I washed and do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, this man is not of God. Talking about Jesus. This man is not of God because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can, how can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. Now look at this. They said Jesus cannot be of God because he did this miracle. He worked on a Sabbath day. You know, it took a lot of work to spit on the ground and make uh, clay out of the dirt on the ground and, and anoint this man's eyes and heal him. This was work on the Sabbath day. But listen, what they call the Sabbath day was not God's intent. Listen, when God made everything, and then he formed man out of the dust of the ground there. Man became a living soul on the seventh day, on the Sabbath day. Look at it in the book of Genesis. It was for man to look at all the wonders of God. It was for man to reflect on the goodness of God. Wow, Father, you made all these wonderful things. The Sabbath day was a day of rest. It was a day to honor God to look at the works that he did, to, to consider him, to consider his greatness, his goodness. It was a time to focus on him. Now, wasn't this what was supposed to be happening here? This was a Sabbath day, and this was a miracle, a work of God that was done. In the truest sense, this was accurate, for the Sabbath day, because everyone should have noticed, wow, Father, look what you did. This is wonderful and glorify and magnify God. Yes, this was a true intent for the Sabbath day, but the religious leaders here made it something more. They added to the word of God. They added to this when it was convenient for them. They said, no, you're not going to do any work at all on the Sabbath day. No, no, no. We're going to do something else. But listen, if one of their sheep fell in a ditch on the Sabbath day, they would go and get that sheep out of the ditch. That was work. If something else happened that was convenient for them to do, then they would get it out. But they wouldn't allow Jesus to work miracles, do the works of God so that people could honor God on that most holy day. My God, give me a break. Are you hearing me? They were they were um, angry at Jesus because they didn't do because Jesus didn't do what he wanted, what they wanted him to do. They wouldn't. Jesus would not be uh, in their box, so to speak. They made a box. They said everybody should act like this. And Jesus said, no, that's not what the father is saying. He's not saying that. They said, Jesus, you ought to do this. But Jesus said, no, that's not the true intent of the father's heart. The father has something very much different in mind here. So 
He healed on the Sabbath day and he made them very upset. But all Jesus was doing was honoring the Sabbath day, giving the people something to look at, to glorify God. Isn't that awesome? Glory to God. So in honoring the Sabbath day, let's magnify the Lord. Talk about his goodness and his grace. But because Jesus didn't conform to their traditions, they were very angry. Jesus was upsetting the apple cart and he did it. I think he did it just as many times as he could. Now, let me tell you this before we close out as well. Now, we know that Jesus had about three and a half years of public ministry. There are 52 weeks in a year, right? So you do the math here, 52 times three and a half. All right, you got that number? Now, so in a year again, there are 52 weeks. So there are 52 Sundays or 52 Saturdays in a year, the Sabbath day, 52. So 52 times three and a half. Those were the number of the days that the Pharisees said, Jesus, you can't work. Now, look, give me a break. Those many days, <laughs> you know, you mean that I have to take these days off to do it your way? No, 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 uh-uh, no, it's not gonna happen. Jesus was gonna make sure that he healed and delivered people uh, as often as he could. Sometime he did take a break, go up into the mountains and rest. He had to and get, and get there with Father and glean from him and receive from him. But he was not gonna stop doing the works of God just because it was the Sabbath and do it their way. No, the true intent of the Sabbath was to honor God. And what better way to do that than to have a miracle? And we all just shout and glorify God because this has happened. Well, our time is gone today. Mm, just getting into the heat of it. But we will get back to here on next time, I promise. So stick around. Don't forget to join me next week. Now you can go to our website at kingdomrock.org and you can catch the entire series. Uh, so check us out today. And uh, let me pray with you again on this week, okay? We did it on last time. Let me pray God's protection over your life and His provision as we go through these uh, difficult times these last days. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, I declare the words of Psalm 91 of your beloved people. Lord, I declare your word that no evil shall befall them, neither shall any plague come nigh their dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. They shall bear them up in their hands, lest they dash their foot against a stone. And Lord, I declare as well that with long life you satisfy them and show them your salvation. Lord, I, I ask that you would be their shepherd, that you would be their provider. And Lord, I declare um, that by the stripes of Jesus that they are healed, delivered, and set free. Bless your people, Father. Keep them always safe and protected and provided for. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, I will see you all next week. Love you. Bye-bye.